Right. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy to be back here with Coffee Chats with Rice. We've got a really exciting subject for you today. We're going to be talking about the Jenga game of life. All those things that push out of place and how we can plug them back up again. How are you doing, Rice? I'm so happy to be back with you, Catherine. It's been a while since we've been able to film a coffee chat. I apologize to the people watching. I do have a little bit of a fever. Catherine knows this. Um, Monday on Aquarius Rising Africa, I admitted that when my nose runs, when I'm at home by myself, I put tampons up my nose. I promise you guys I won't do that. But, um, if my words get a little tangled, I do have a little bit of a fever, but that's all good because I'm excited to be back here with you. And to talk about this subject, this is such an important subject to talk about. Yeah, I mean, Bryce and I, you know, we, we talk a lot off camera and everything. And the thing is, schedules are really tricky. And also, it's going to fit into the topic we're talking about, because both of us are constantly doing a lot of our own work. I mean, I've just spent a long weekend at the Conference of Human Consciousness and Evolution, which was amazing with Greg Braker, Braden, Marianne Williamson, lots of really interesting people there. Um, really good range of thought provoking, consciousness provoking talks. Um, I've just had two in a flash to stay. You've been doing loads of work. I've been watching all your other stuff and everything. And, you know, what we wanted to really get across with the Jenga game of life is the fact that all of us, wherever we're at, there's always going to be things that push those little wooden blocks out. Just as you're building up, there's going to be things that come along to try and collapse that tower. But there's also so many things, aren't there, Bryce, that we can be doing to put those, plug those gaps in as quick as they appear. Yes. And I was telling you before we signed on that this kind of goes back to a video clip high released a couple of days ago that I really appreciate it because he kind of, you know, it's, it's interesting, especially when you're a student, we'll get into the role of the student and you, all these people are kind of teaching the same theory, but they say it in different ways. And sometimes the way somebody else says it is going to click with someone else versus the way another person says it. it's the same message, but it's the way it clicks in your mind. And with the Jenga game, game of life, this is what we kind of signed up for when we took a human experience. You know, I think there's this really um, kind of, I don't know if it's an ignorant approach or maybe it's just an uninformed approach that at some point in this existence in a human body, we're going to master life. When you master life is when you die. So mm -hmm. if you're still in a human body, you're still going to have these Jenga things happening to you. And what this is and the way that Eastern philosophy looks at this is even though these little pushes aren't comfortable and they're frustrating they're necessary because they cause you to have to reground yourself to have to rethink yourself to have to reshift yourself and it's like those those graphs people show and when, when people think of success they think of it as just like a straight line up but real success looks like this highs and lows highs and lows highs and lows and and but, to, but, but to our people who are doing the work, they'll tell you sometimes the, the lowest valleys is where the most work was done and where the most grace and mercy was given and where the potency, potency was. And one of my favorite teachers, Ram Das, who's no longer with us, he used to always say that, you know, when these little obstacles happen, when the Jenga piece gets pushed out, instead of freaking out, just go, okay, this now is interesting. This just got interesting. This is the potency. And so if we refocus our view on that, we start to actually appreciate those moments because it helps us grow and expand as a human being. Because our whole point of being here is for our soul to know itself. And the only yeah. way for the soul to know itself is to be challenged. Absolutely. And we see it all the time. And I, I'm sort of smiling, Riley, because I can genuinely say I've reached that stage in life and through the continual self-work that I'm doing that will never stop to the day I pass out of this physical suit into whatever I decide to come into next. Um, because when when these challenges come now, I'm very much like, okay, what's the lesson? What's the lesson? Because I've been through enough of them to realize that if I don't ask that question, seek and answer it, then it's going to keep coming back in a more extreme form and more extreme form until I do get the lesson. And sometimes, as we all know, the lessons are very painful um, and very hard to learn. And sometimes my ego can get in the way and I can resist, resist, resist. And of course, then it gets stronger and stronger. And I think that this awareness is absolutely key. I mean, I always make a joke to people now that if I'm rude to you, it's a conscious choice. I've chosen to be rude to you. 
So if I've been rude to you recently, I've chosen to be rude to you. And and that might be my issue. It might be me trying to give a lesson, might be all sorts of things. But this awareness is absolutely key because whether it is the air pollution, whether it's a stress, whether it's the uh, intimate relationships, whether it's friendships, whether it's work, whether it's the food choices that you've got, you know, a lot of people particularly when they're traveling, they find it very difficult to keep their food standards up. Yeah. Um, there's so many, there's there's pollution, there's medicines, there's opinions, there's people looking to knock you down, there's financial struggles, there's all sorts of stresses that are pushing those blocks of your life out. And it's so unrealistic, don't you think, Bryce, to, to expect those blocks. It's not like you ever build your tower, as you say, and then it stays there. However beautiful your tower is built, there's always going to be something that's going to come and push a segment out. And you can look at that, too. With the, I was just thinking as well um, about the idea of course correction in life. And sometimes, and this has been my experience through most of my life, the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, will like tap you on the shoulder and be like, you're going in the wrong direction. You're building in the wrong direction. You're building in the wrong direction and you don't listen. And so it's literally going to come in and smack you. And so sometimes when these Jenga pieces get pushed out, it's also a renovation. It's yeah. also pushing you in a di different direction. And I know, and uh, Ram Dass again speaks about this. Sometimes we can look back at our life and look at the trajectory of our life and see where these little wobbly places have happened in our life that we thought were just so horrible in the moment, but it put us on a path of, of that we would never treat for the world. Now, you know, I look at my, I love what I do now on, on YouTube. I love doing this job. I love, love, love it. And now I'm branching off and doing more about the yoga stuff, which I didn't start off doing on YouTube. But the only reason why I'm on YouTube is because my shala shut down mm. when the lockdown happened. And I was hit with that moment of, Oh my God, I've spent all these years going back and forth to India, doing all this work, sweat, blood, and tear, broken bones, everything. And now just like that, the government came down and took it away. Yeah. So I had to figure out something else. And so I just started doing YouTube and I feel like I had nothing to lose. I could start talking about my political beliefs on YouTube because my business was gone, you know, and now it's given me so many wonderful opportunities, having you as a friend, having Stephanie, Shanti, Morning, all these people that are now my legitimate friends. Even if YouTube went away today, Catherine would still be a good friend of mine, one of my best friends. Like, you know, cause we do talk all the time, you know? And so even in that approach, even taking the professionalism out of it, just the life experience that that some of these perceived negative Jenga pieces have also afforded you. And in another, another way, it also forces you to dig deeper within yourself. Yeah. And I think that's something we have as human beings, we have a really hard time with. Um, we're always looking to the Mac. We're always looking to the outside of us for our salvation. We're always looking for someone to come save us for the white hats to save us for a new financial system to save us. Nothing of none of, none of that's going to happen until you start to save yourself until you save yourself. And that's, that's part of, again, why we came to this earth. And if life was easy and if these Jenga pieces didn't get pushed out, we would never have the opportunity to learn how to save ourselves. And how boring would it be? You know, you took a look at a thing, you know, what are we all going to do? Just look at our lives as a stable column that never moves. You know, where's the fun in that? Well, you know, no one would actually want to exist like that, even though we say we don't choose things. And I think it's really amazing to keep asking the questions. You know, this is it's one of the things you don't know which bit's going to go out next. You might be able to ask a question about to think and our, keeping that opening questioning mind is where we're going to learn the most. Mm -hmm. And it's so important because we've got to question ourselves. But there's a couple of things that have come up recently, partly at the conference I went to, but partly things that have been coming up for me quite a lot that I've been observing a lot in what's going on around me is, do you think, Bryce, that we're really at a time now for people to start taking action, whether it's for them to say, right, I'm here in my life. These bits have been knocked out. How do I want to course correct? How do I want to rebuild my Jenga tower? Do I want to take a course? Do I want to do some studying? Do I want to improve my health? What, what aspect do I want to do? But I've actually now, I've done enough sort of listening. I've now physically got to start doing. 
I think that that point in time for every individual could be any point of your life where you make that decision. But as far as us globally, you know, I was reading, um, doing a recording for the Sophia code. And she kind of spoke about this with the transference of the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. And, um, what, what she kind of spoke about is this idea of, of eminence versus transcendence and transcendence is kind of the, the Western world modality that we've been living under spiritually, where again, God is outside of us and we're having to somehow achieve and reach God which causes the jealousy, it causes the bitterness, it causes the shame, the anger, because we feel like we are without. Where eminence is realizing that God is within us and God is everywhere. And how much more freeing that is and liberating it that is. And I think because we're moving from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarian, Aquarius, you know, when we go through what's happening right now is just energetically, collectively for everyone, we're going through a metamorphosis. And metamorphosis is never going to be comfortable. You think about like a caterpillar caterpillar cocooning. I'm sure it's not comfortable for the butterfly to bust out of that cocoon, but it's necessary. And so I think what's happening now is in a beautiful way, it doesn't feel beautiful for us at the moment. The universe has kind of brought us to our knees and kind of showing that as if we, if we keep reaching outside of ourselves, then we're never going to get what we want. And we're just going to keep knocking down more and more and more and more and more. And at some point when that person hits rock bottom is when they have to say, Oh my God, it's like, it's like uh, the wizard of Oz where she says, you had the power all along. Yeah. You have the power within you all along. I heard another teacher say, it's like, we live in these cage, these cages, like a caged bird. And then one day we realize the door to the cage isn't even locked. Exactly. Exactly. It's a, uh, uh, yeah, it's that film, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. What is it? We'll come to me in a minute. But going back to the butterfly analogy, what you said that was so important, and we this came up a lot at the weekend as well. And what's interesting is when the caterpillar is, is in the cocoon and converting itself into transforming, alchemizing itself into the butterfly, there's a battle that goes on. So the caterpillar cells break down, and it's like a gooey mix in there and and it's resisting there's resistance 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 because the caterpillar cells don't want to they see it as a dying yeah but what they don't realize is that they're not dying they're transferring and then there becomes to a tipping point and as you rightly said everyone's tipping point will be different there'll be lots of tipping points in your life etc and then once the, the caterpillar almost surrenders it transforms into the butterfly but what's equally important is if i come along and see a butterfly trying to get out of the cocoon and I break the cocoon open to help it then the butterfly will never fly because yeah. it doesn't develop the strength through that resistance of breaking out of the cocoon so I might think I'm helping the butterfly and I will put my hand up this has been a, a consistent pattern for me in my life of wanting to over help people and what I realize now through my own development is that, yes, you can absolutely be there to support people when they need it, but you cannot do it for them because none of us, you know, no one else can heal my trauma. No one else can make me physically, emotionally, spiritually stronger, more connected. And these analogies are important because there's so much to learn for all of us in those. When we say in, in the Ashtanga world a lot, like, you know, I was for a recording, I was, we we're talking about the role of the student. And I, and I will say, you know, even though I'm an authorized teacher, I'm only a teacher when I'm teaching the rest of my life, I'm a student. I will always, first and foremost, I'm also, I'm still learning too. I, the only difference between me and my students is I've just been at this for longer. And so my job is to try to help students avoid mistakes or avoid you know, or, or keep them in the path of the practice. But there comes a time too, where I know that I can't interrupt somebody's karma. And all karma is, is work. That's all it is, is cause and effect. It's, it's just your work. And so I think we're scared of that word karma in the West, but it's nothing to be, but I can't interrupt that. I don't know what that person's soul contract is. I can't even remember my own soul contract. So what am I going to try to control somebody else's? They have to experience, I'm going to help them as much as I can, but at some point I have to let them to have their experiences for themselves because that's what their soul needs to evolve. And I can't stand in the way of that. And so that's such a beautiful with the butterfly. It's the same thing, like, especially in sometimes, I mean, I was just talking about this this morning. We talk about this all the time before somebody has a breakthrough, 
it's like that slingshot, they get pulled back. It's like all of a sudden, everything seems to be really falling apart. And then all of a sudden, boom, a breakthrough happens. And so when you see that, like somebody's life is just really falling apart and you step in too much, you're going to stop that forward motion from happening for that person. And the universe works in mysterious ways. And you said all the time, Catherine, I totally agree with you. As we think as human beings, we're so superior to nature. We're not. We're dumbasses compared to nature. You look at this time of year in the Northern Hemisphere, we, autumn is the official term in the United States. We call it fall. Um, and the, the, the leaves, it's the most beautiful time of the year because the leaves are changing and the air is clean. But this is the time of year of death. But yes. what's so beautiful is that the trees, the nature, they don't hold on to their leaves because they know and they trust that once winter is over, new leaves will appear. And so they allow the process to happen. They, and, and in allowing that to happen, it's beautiful. It's, and so we can learn from that. I'm sure animals are very similar to that too, where they kind of know, we know that a lot of animals, even domesticated animals, cats in particular, know when they're going to pass away and they'll leave the house and go peacefully. Yeah. They accept it, you know, and, and us as humans, we want to be so ascended, but ascension only happens after we die anyway, but yet we resist death. And, you know, so, so there's so much to, to learn from these, these little obstacles and just allowing ourselves and it is you know i'm a vata pitta i have high anxiety so i understand it when things happen it's a panic attack i mean shoot i i have a panic attack if my dog barks yeah. you know that's that's my yeah. anxiety coming up but to be learn how to like just breathe through it and settle into it and allowing everything to play out because that's when you're going to take the bull by the horn you're going to course correct and you're going to be leaps and bounds ahead of where you were mentally emotionally physically spiritually after the Jenga piece has been pushed back in by you. Does that, if that make sense? A massively amount of sense. And what I'm loving is, is in this day, is one of the beauties of having the technology for most of us at our fingertips is there's so much support there out there. So when you're noticing that your towel is wobbling, there's so many things you can reach out for. It might be a supplement. It might be a friend. It might be a course. It might be um you know taking yourself off and nurturing yourself it can be so many different things but there's so much support out there that you can reach for as and when you need it and that's going to change at different places at stages in your life and i think it it is such a cliche so many of these things come back to the same basic principles you know sort of ancient philosophy and applying it to modern times is so important but when we remind ourselves that we cannot get to where we want to be without the ups and downs of life and it's how we deal with those yes there are some very very tragic things that happen I'm not negating that at all and at the time we've all been through them they're incredibly challenging to deal with but just like you said, sort of with nature, there, there is a natural cycle to life. Um, some people are trying to push that forward a bit too quickly and make us <laughs> make our autumns come a bit quick. But when you know that, there's so much corrective action you can take as well. And, it, and part of the wisdom, I think, and you only get this through experience, in, in my opinion, is to know when to surrender and let go and what's part of life's natural flow and when to course correct and take corrective action. Absolutely. And I do, I'm glad you said that there are sources available. And I do want to um, bring up the idea of toxic positivity. So I don't, what we're not saying like you have to pretend like everything's fine. It's like that meme with Ross from Friends where he's like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. No, you're allowed to, to have your moments of, of being emotional. And, and yes, when, when shit happens, shit happens and it sucks and it's hard and it brings you to a point of, of, of devastation sometimes, but that, and that, and that needs to be understood and, and to lean into that. I know a lot of therapists call it leaning into like leaning into that feeling of hopelessness, because the only thing that's going to give you hope, the only thing that's going to give you power is leaning into the hopelessness, leaning into the feeling of being powerless. No one, my, our friend Cindy, we've, that you've done videos with too. She said, she brought up something really interesting on Sunday. Cause I teach off camera. We were at her shala and we were talking about the role of suffering because the, the, the idea of human suffering is huge in yoga like what is human suffering what is the human condition because we're that's all we're really just trying to fix in our lives is our own suffering really um but cindy brought up a good point you can't have a mystic without suffering because people who don't suffer don't contemplate yeah suffering allows you to ask the questions 
that you need to ask in order to course correct, in order to change your trajectory, in order to heal yourself. If you don't have those moments of suffering, you can't sit there and say, why? You can't sit there and say, I don't understand why. And when those questions start to be asked, that's when things start to shift and turn. It's, and I know I've said this before, but it's so true. And I think for us as Westerners, especially, we, have, we live in a society all over the Western world, whether you're American, Canadian, English, Australian, European, whatever, first world country. We are so fortunate in our lives. We live very comfortable lives. We have Tempur-Pedic mattresses. Yep, even our animals are living in a very yeah. different. I have um, one pet. I have. I never use word, but but been having the luxury to share your life with animals for pure pleasure is really really important, isn't it? You know that oh, is yeah. such a gift. You know because most people wouldn't be able to afford to feed dogs or exactly. cats. Exactly. I mean, or, we know. I mean, Ravi is on. I mean. We can do another show about that another day because Catherine's diet has literally changed my dog's life. And I'm a vegetarian, but my freezer now looks like a serial killer lives in this house. Because it's yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but he has it's changed his life. But yes, the fact that we can do that, the fact that we live in a world that if we want to change our hair color, we can go change our hair color. The fact that we can get Botox. For, I mean, we, we live in a world that our ancestors never knew. And that comfort, I think, though, even though I love being a Westerner, I love these comforts. Um, that comfort has kind of numbed us very to much so. the truth of pain and that discomfort is actually valuable. And I've said this story before, David Garig, my original, who was just here. That's another reason why, because I we had David Garig here in Atlanta. Um, but he, a long time ago, he said in a, in a conference, because the Ashtanga practice itself is very physically painful. It's supposed to be. And he asked Guruji, is this pain necessary? And Guruji said, yes, because pain is real. Mm. It's real. And so when we get to these points in our life, not just physical pain, because we know physical pain is just a manifestation of emotional, that's what's real. And that's what's going to get you asking the questions, the why, the why. And that's what's going to shift you into that place of a mystic where you start to understand your soul. And the more you understand your soul, and the more you understand your suffering, and the more you understand your potential as a human being, the journey you're on, the more you respect others too. The more you see it in others, the more you see the soul of your animal, the soul of the tree. And so if we all collectively started to realize this in this transference of energy anyway, because the whole damn world, world is uncomfortable right now because we are that caterpillar in that cocoon trying to move into that age of Aquarius from Pisces. And if we all take the opportunity to see these gen Jenga pieces, to see this friction as something that's interesting and necessary to show us who we really are, the faster we're going to get through this. The more we accept yeah. that we are, we are the white hats, guys. We are, you are that. You're the star of the show. Yeah. And how resistant it is. So whenever I play Junior, I'm constantly amazed at even how you can pull bits out of the foundation at the bottom and it's still standing. So what the thing is, even when you feel you've had your foundation pulled out, and again, I'm saying we all have, you know, I, I, we're not negating the, the real suffering that people, animals, the planet, everything goes through. However, the more we have these tools in our toolkit, the more we share. And I think the other thing that's really come out loud and clear to me is real spiritual development is not looking at yourself in any form of isolation, is looking, how can I be kind? How can I help? How can I contribute? Because we know that I don't think there's a single person that would actually take the time to listen to this today that doesn't understand that everything is connected energetically. So when you sometimes some of the best things to rebuild your tower can be is to take some of the attention off yourself and put it forward into helping others and then it's amazing how much resilience that can give yourself because there is quite a shift of absolutely again not negating put your own oxygen mask on first yeah you can't love others or give from an empty cup i completely get that but I think sometimes this self-love, self-care can be misinterpreted. You know, it doesn't have to mean not doing anything for anyone else, quite the opposite. So sometimes the most self-love you can do 
is to uh, is actually involved in helping others around you whether that others is an aloe vera plant or a person or a dog doesn't matter well and that's we call that karma yoga where you give back and that's you know you can it could be as something as simple as going and working a day in a soup kitchen and passing mm. out food to other people and there is a human connectionness there and it also what as you were we kind of talked about this before and i want to bring this up again too we need and, and the idea of too much self-love or too much. We also have to be careful about lionizing people, putting yeah. people at, that's something that as a teacher, like when people, I was telling you, Catherine, when people, you know, thank me immensely for or say I've changed their life or whatever. And, and you know, I'm like, no, you did that. You changed your life. I'm just the teacher. I'm just telling you what I've learned and I have my own work to do. And so I want people to be careful about that. Of giving too much of their power away to another person all this information, Catherine, you've said it perfectly. This is ancient information. Catherine and I didn't come up with this. This has been around since the beginning of time. You know, we're just talking about it and having a discussion about it because it's important because, and I, and I, and I hope Catherine, you don't mind me saying this. Neither one of us have, has mastered being human. If you're alive, you still haven't mastered it. As I said, jokingly, when you pass away, then you can say you've mastered it. But if you're still alive in a human body, you haven't mastered it yet. You still got more and more and more and more things to work through. And so I want everybody to understand when we start to lionize teachers or lionize truthers or lionize the white hats, even we can respect people and be grateful that they shared the information, but the work is coming from you. And you have to understand that. And the more we start to understand that, the more we take our power back. And then we have that ability to then give to others too, and, sh and pass it along. We always say that in yoga as well. Like, now you have the responsibility to share it with somebody else, whether you yeah. fully become a teacher or you just share it with your kid or your husband or your friend. Now you have the responsibility to pay it forward and start talking about this with other people as well, you know, so that they find their own power, you know, and, and that's, it's, it's not, it's, it's, um, but we do kind of live in a narcissistic world where it's either me, 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 or them, 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 them. And it's, it's never just that balance of taking accountability and responsibility for our own path and our own karma and our own dharma and the own only and the reason why we chose as a soul to come back at this particular time believe it or not you chose to be here at this time for a reason and that reason wasn't to have nasara that reason was to find your own path back to your soul absolutely hallelujah and i think you know We've had lots of discussions. I've had lots of discussions with other people. So I'm really grateful for those people that are keep pushing those bits of my my Jenga tower out because I really have learned so much. I've still got a lot to learn. I will always have a lot to learn. I don't ever want to stop learning. I have a very, very low boredom threshold. And what I'm doing is, you know, trying to take the things of learning, listening, and then taking some time to integrate and sort of balance and doing those. And it's really, really important to allow yourself the time to actually integrate and do things yeah. by trial and error as well. You know, I was gonna, let's, let's hit on that for a little bit before we end what integration yeah. actually looks like. Cause I, I do think that, and I say this on my videos a lot, don't compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 10, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's uh, the reason why I teach is because I've been doing it for longer. So therefore I can help guide you. You know, that's, it's just because I've been doing it for longer. The integration process is so important. And so when you first learn something or you first conceive a new idea, the universe doesn't expect you to act on that right away. It takes time for it to integrate into you, for you to start to really start practicing it. So I want everybody to be like patient with themselves when they're learning this, you're going to, you're going to fuck up. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to go back to your old habits. You catch it though. You understand it now. And then you don't beat yourself up, but it's almost like if you look at the physical body, I mean, if you decided today, Catherine, that you wanted to go run a marathon, yeah. would you just go run a marathon or would you take a few months to train for it, to integrate the pattern of running into your physical body? It's the same thing spiritually, mentally, and emotionally too. You have to have those moments of training to mess up, to, to accidentally, you know, blow up one day instead of actually pull it in and work on yourself and go, oops, you know, you have to have those moments for this philosophy, for this practice to actually come into fruition into your life. And I still, 16 years later, I've been doing this. I still fuck up. I still oh, tell me about it. 
you know, I work my my main people might think this is my main, but my main work is as a teacher and also working one on one with clients, with human clients and and their animals. And not always, you know, sometimes I'm just working with humans. Sometimes I'm working, they get me into work with the animals. But of course, it's the human that you're working with because they're the decision maker. And I absolutely love it. And every single day I'm learning new things. Every single one of my animals teaches me something more. Every single interaction I have with someone, um, you know, whether it's on a personal thing or or listening or attending or learning from someone else, it's all a learning lesson. And sometimes I'm a bit slow at taking those lessons on board. And when I'm a bit slow, then the lessons get stronger and stronger until I do. But that's okay. And I think... You know, probably my biggest message for anyone who's watching this today is first and foremost, thank you. Secondly, please let us know below where you're at and what you're learning and share it, because you can guarantee if there's something that's working for you, that someone else is going to find that helpful. And I think for me, the biggest thing is not comparing what you were saying. You know, do not compare yourself to other people because there's a reason we're all meant to be going through things at different times. Imagine if every single person was having their low at the same time, the world wouldn't be able to function. So there's a reason that when you're having your lows, some people around you will be having their highs. And that because they're having their highs, they will be able to be in an energetic position to help and support you. And then it will be reversed. And when you're having your highs, you'll be energetically and physically and whatever way helping others around you. And that's the way it's meant to be. We're not all meant to be at the low point at the same time. It would be an absolute disaster. And that is what the powers above are trying to do, is trying to make us all have our low point at the same time. But no. They're not going to. No, I'm so glad you brought that up. So so this is so important. I do have to say, I want to give a shout out to all. I've I've gotten so many emails from subscribers or I I hate, I feel like a douchebag calling people subscribers because I, because Catherine and I are just normal people. We're just, we're like you, we're normal people. We're not, we're not celebrities. We're not, we're just, that's why we have discussions when we like talking with you guys, because we're all doing this together. But I've gotten so many emails from people who are starting to get up now at four o'clock in the morning doing their exercises. And and I have to tell you the amount of emails I've gotten from people that are doing that, that never done it before. They're telling me how it's affecting them. You're a badass. If you're just attempting to do this, even though it feels overwhelming, I want to give you a round of applause because that takes a lot of gumption. It takes a lot of moxie. It takes a lot, a lot of strength and willpower to actually make that shift whatever that is, whether it is getting up at Brahma Morta to exercise or whether it's doing breathing classes or starting meditation or whatever it is. The hours. That, yeah. The fact that are you going to a kickboxing class like Catherine was doing, whatever that is, that's putting you out of that comfort zone to challenge you to start to work on yourself. Gold medal. Like just the fact that you're doing it is, is enough to start that shifting process to pull those jinga blocks back in and to take your power back and to find out who you really are and what you're really made of. So that's awesome. I'm just so grateful that people are doing it because that's amazing. I 100% agree. So let us know below what you're doing. And there's no, don't judge it as big or small, you know, really don't anything. What new habits, what new things are you starting to put into your life? And please, please share them because I guarantee every person that shares something, what they're doing, and you can share your struggles as well as your successes, you will inspire someone else that sees this, just just give something a go. And that's all it needs. Take their first step, give it a go. Thank you so much, Bryce. I love that as always. I think we'll be, hopefully schedules permitting, we will be back next week. Yes. Have an amazing, an amazing week, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.